Hi guys, and welcome to Keep Hope Alive podcast. My name is Nadine, of course. I got a special guest with us here today. His name is Wilk Wilkinson. Welcome to Keep Hope Alive. So glad to be here, Nadine. Thank you so much. Oh, you're so welcome. But really, really quick, Wilk, I love your name. That is so cool. I've never met anybody named Wilk until now. But hey, um, out of the past 15 years, how many weddings have you been to? Oh, boy, I, I got to, you know, I, I would say one to two a year, probably somewhere between 20 and 25, I, I guess. I, I mean, it, it's you it's must probably... be in the industry. Are, <laughs> are these actually weddings you're a guest to? <laughs> yeah, well, we got my, my wife's got a lot of family around here. I got a lot of family around here. Uh, okay. you know, family, friends, uh, different things. So, um, I, I don't know. I, it, it seems like maybe one a year, maybe, maybe that's an over-exaggeration, but, uh, but, but yeah, I would, I would say maybe 15 to 25, somewhere in that ballpark. Oh, well, that is so cool. That's a lot of wedding gifts. <laughs> so, uh, when you're a guest and let's say the wedding is happening at a church, when you go into the ceremony site, usually there's something to sign. What is that one thing you have to sign as a guest? Uh, so, well, I guess the, the, the old one would have been the, like a guest register, but now lately I've been seeing more things like, uh, I think we were at one this, this past year where, uh, where we were signing puzzle pieces and then another, another place we were signing, uh, sign like a, a chalkboard with a grease pencil or something like that. So a lot of times, what I've been seeing Nadine is, is these these uh these forever keepsake kind of things, right? These things that will eventually go on the wall, whether it be some kind of poster board or or like I said, a chalkboard. Or I thought that puzzle thing was pretty pretty neat. You sign different puzzle pieces. Uh, one one wedding we were at had had like Jenga pieces where you were signing Jenga pieces. So it's it's been pretty cool. I mean, we've, we've I've seen some pretty neat stuff. Okay, well, yeah, I've seen all that at weddings also because I'm a wedding photographer and I love it. I've seen the Jenga one too. So those are very you know neat and awesome. And I've also like the picture frames. You know, when you get your engagement picture, they can sign you know the border of picture which is really cool because you can hang that on your wall but one of our biggest sponsors here is life on record so what they do is get rid of that guest book and they bring a vintage rotary phone so you're actually picking up the phone and it's usually set on a pretty table and everything so you can pick up the phone you can leave a message for one minute five minutes 30 minutes if it's a wedding, don't do 30 minutes. There's going to be a line. <laughs> but hey, you know, congratulations on your wedding. Or I always use this scenario because I can see it. I can visualize a guy doing this. But a groomsman would go, dude, it's about time you put a ring on her finger. Congrats. I'm so happy for you. So I call it the gift of voice. And right next to the phone is a QR code. So if they didn't want to use the phone for whatever reason, they can scan that barcode and either leave a message before or after the wedding. So once all these messages get collected, they'll either burn it on a 12-inch vinyl record or they have a keepsake speaker. And it's so cute because they personalize the record cover and everything. So, but you get this phone number. You have to return the phone, <laughs> but you get the phone number for one year and their plans start at $99, which is amazing. So I tell people if they're using it for a wedding, I mean, you can use it for any kind of event that you would like. But like, I've been telling my friends and family, hey, it's almost our one year anniversary. And I know they're going to be cutting off that phone number or call back and wish us a happy anniversary. So those get collected as well. But it's really fun. They're so cute. I put it on the Facebook page for Keep Hope Alive, but it's like black and gold phone is so pretty. I know if I get married again, I'm definitely going with them. And it's not because I'm just talking about them. It's just a amazing concept. And it's the coolest 
phone on the market is so pretty. I love it. But to visit more about them, please visit www.lifeonrecord.com. So, Wilk, let's get started. Who is Wilk? <laughs> well, that's a that's quite the question, Nadine. Who's Wilk? So, uh, you know, today I am somebody who uh, works very hard at, at at trying to trying to help people just kind of get through this this uh, this this crazy environment that we're in nowadays. There's a lot of toxicity and and, and things like that, and and um, you know, a lot of personal pain out there that, that, that people have. So, so I try to help people, you know, I I'm, I'm all about bettering the world one attitude at a time. So, uh, you know, mindset mentor attitude, uh, you know, somebody who, who tries to, to help people focus on, on the good, uh, rather than, uh, so much of the bad that that's, that, w- that we find ourselves so easily, uh, encapsulated in these days. So, uh, I, I'm somebody who I'm obviously a podcaster. I, I do the D-Rate the Hate podcast. I uh, I'm a husband. I'm a father. Uh, those are are first and foremost on my list of 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 who I really am nowadays. But uh, but yeah, I, I I don't break down my uh, I guess my identity or who I am in any one specific category because I'm kind of all over the place, Nadine. I do I do a lot of different things. Or like, who do you cater to with your podcast? And I'm like the world <laughs> you know it's like i used to have one niche but no i keep getting people interview me interview me and it's not all in the event industry and it's like doctors and authors and i love it different kind of coaches so it's awesome when you kind of have a bigger niche and everything so yeah yeah i i, I think i mean obviously you know, when we're in the podcast industry or kind of in this podcasting space, um, we we want to focus on something to to kind of have a target. But but it's amazing once you start to have conversations, all the different people you get to meet and and the different things that you get to do and the different personalities and and yeah. uh, you know being somebody you know like I, I know you said you 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 don't like to to do everything scripted, nor do I. And uh, so it's amazing, you know, just kind of seeing where the where these different trails go once we start having those conversations, the, just these natural conversations like people used to have, uh, you know, before everything started going online. Right. We would go into public spaces and we'd meet people and we'd start to have a conversation and and those real genuine conversations that we have with people. You just don't know where they're going to go or what's going to come out of them. But that's a beautiful thing. Yeah, it really is. So, you know, it's fun to catch people a little off guard too with the questions because, you know, when we're talking to you, we're hearing you and it's what you're telling us. And, you know, for me, I I don't have ADD, but it's sometimes I feel like it. I'm like, whoa, 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 we got a question, you know, because <laughs> I think the listeners want to know, I want to know. So it's like, let's bring it to the world, but I'm not going to ask a question that you may not be able to answer, even though maybe I'm thinking, I really want to know this, you know? So, um, but definitely everybody's different. Everybody needs to be heard. Everybody has a story and it could be a learning lesson for anybody out there, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think the best thing as being a podcaster is hearing all these different stories because I'm always like, I did not know that, you know? And you know, it was interesting because my last podcast I did, it was a lady was actually in a women's prison for like over eight years. She had a 12 year sentence, but got out, but like learning everything that they do, like on a day-to-day basis, it was really eye-opening. And I don't know if this has happened to you, like you do a podcast with somebody and then of course after you're finishing up and everything and maybe it's at nighttime and you're like okay I'm going to bed I'm tired blah 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 but you wake up in the morning and go you know what that was a really good podcast you know I've learned so much and it brings you into the next day happy but it is about positive energy I love that you said that don't focus too much on negative energy because it will bring you down you will get depressed and you got to work on that. 
So I agree with you. So, you know, I, I don't know about you, but in life in general, gosh, I always like, why do I have so many challenges I have to go through? And I hate saying why, because as an adult, I kind of understand that makes us stronger. So did you have to go through some of those challenges too? Yeah, I, I, I will. I will be uh, completely candid with you. My uh, a very large portion of my life was something that I, uh, um, I, I was I was very angry, very miserable. I I, I dealt with I, I would say more than my share of challenges, but it, but more than that, Nadine, I made more than my share of mistakes, and um, so you know, so as I as I worked through that journey you know just just being uh miserable angry resentful uh that kind of thing i uh i began to learn that that it wasn't all about what was happening to me you know kind of like you just said or 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 what uh what things that i was being challenged with it was a matter of how i was going to deal with those things and once yeah. i began to realize that I had the power to react. I had no power over so many different things in my life and, and so many things that were happening around me. This world is full of events and full of different things that are completely outside of our control. But once I started to realize that not only did I have the power to react to these things well, but I had the absolute responsibility to react to these things the right way, my life began to change, you know, my, my life began to change. My attitude began to change that positive energy that you were talking about. You know, one of the episodes that I've got coming out pretty soon, we'll, we'll talk about, you know, where our thoughts go, our energy flows or, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. And, you know, when I began to realize Nadine, that I had that power, I had that responsibility, how my life was going to go was going to be a direct reflection on how I was dealing with those things that were outside of my control, how I was reacting to those things that were outside of my control, did my life become much, much better. And, and so with that being said, you know, I try to take a lot of those, I, I, I look at every mistake and, and everything, every event, uh, really, but, but certainly our mistakes, every one of those is an opportunity for learning. And when per, when a person starts to look at, you know, how did I react to this? How could I have reacted better? Was there something that I did that contributed to this event that I, I, I now see as, you know, whatever, right? When somebody mm -hmm. starts to take and, and really work through those things from a standpoint of personal accountability – things began, uh, began or begin to get much, much better. Very true. Very, very true. And sometimes it's hard to realize that at first, I mean, it took me a long time, maybe like in my thirties to understand really what I was here, what was my purpose, you know, in life. And, you know, I'm 46 now. And I think what was best said out the other one, we go through different seasons, which is very, very true. So, um, you know, over my life, I knew as a kid, I was like, hey, I want to be a certified wedding planner. And I want to be able to help people get married, enjoy their special day. And then it was like, it felt like six or seven years later, I was like, no, I'm going to do photography because I got this, you know, I've been in the industry of hospitality and events. I was like, and I've been doing that for over 20 years and I love it. But for another reason, I, I started a company way before podcasts and it was called Wedcast. And I was doing commercials and interviewing different vendors in the event industry, but it was too expensive. The concept was amazing. I had my video camera guy with us. I had a lady who spoke Spanish too, so it could be translated, but the cost of that commercial was going to be way too high. So when podcasts came, I'm, I was in a different segment teaching people about relationships. If you're in an abusive relationship, 
how to get out, how to be safe. If you have kids, how to make you and the kids safe and get the counseling that's needed. And, you know, somebody, it hit me, this girl goes, I thought you were doing this online. I was like, no, it's in person here in Texas. Oh, okay. Would you ever do it online? And I was like, I don't know, you know, and at the time I didn't know. And I talked it over with a friend of mine and things started to fall together. You know, it was like another beginning, another opening. And, you know, now I look at it, do I still want to do photography more than podcast? And I think they wait, if they were on a scale, they're kind of both similar. So I was just like, you know, when I am able to talk to somebody and listen to them and hear them and spread the word, you know, to people who listen to the podcast. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. No, that's absolutely right. Uh, that is absolutely right. And, you know, one of the things Nadine that, that, that I saw on your site that I, I really liked and, and, I, and I've seen kind of a common theme out of some of the stuff that you've done is, is, you know, that, that idea of really being seen, right? Because when we yeah. are having these conversations, the, the best way for uh, our point to get across is to really show those people that we are having a conversation with that they are seen, they are heard. Um, yeah. You know, you, you talked about, you know, doing the different kinds of coaching and, and, and the, the different things. And then, and then obviously, you know, you being somebody with, with great passion for, you know, uh, weddings and, and, and the idea of love and, and how we love each other and how we are received by other people that, it, that all that stuff ties together so well, but it all begins with making sure that in that interaction, what we are doing, making sure that that person feels seen and that their point is, is truly being received by you. And, and then we can make so much ground in those interpersonal connections. Right. Yeah. Now, if this could only work in the medical field, too, then we got some. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> well, that, I learned that one. yesterday. I'm like, you know, I'm helping the world, but, you know, a doctor is not hearing me and not seeing me. Just, <laughs> I was yeah. like, wow. So, <laughs> yeah, they, uh, that, that is one thing that, that, uh, in recent years that has really become followed up with our, uh, uh, with our health and our public health industry, right? Is that that interpersonal relationship that we used to have with our GPs and stuff like that? Just the uh, the idea that we were we were more than just a number. You know, we there was a true relationship in that that uh, parent uh, or not parent. Well, that too, but but the uh, the the doctor patient relationship and and uh, yeah, that's a that's a whole nother. Uh, a whole nother thing, but yeah, it's definitely a problematic <laughs> a spot podcast. in society yeah. today. Yeah, uh, yeah, just bringing a uh, normalcy back to the medical field and not being treated like a number. I remember I was in the hospital a few months ago and I didn't get my results. I had to wait for them while being admitted in the hospital to come through my phone app. Oh, I was geez. like, yep. I'm being admitted, but you guys can't tell me why my phone's going off. And I was looking at my blood work and I was like, was that good or bad? Why couldn't they just come in and just talk and say, this is why we're admitting you. This is what we saw in your blood work. So just having that conversation with a doctor is so important. I don't care what age you are. <laughs> like the seniors, definitely mid age, like 40s. Yes, I still want to hear it. Um, maybe the younger generation is like, I don't, we got the app. I have no idea, you know? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, they're more on the other side, right? They're like, why is this person talking to me? Why didn't they just send it to my phone? <laughs> yeah this... i don't want to talk to somebody in person you're scaring me <laughs> yeah 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 no no just send it to my phone i'll be fine i'll just be over here bleeding <laughs> i'm sorry i don't want to laugh but it, that could be so true like oh my gosh i was talking to somebody and i guess the mom got her or something broke something but they were too busy. Even, I don't know, like not only medical field, I remember I was going out to eat at Long John's and me and my boyfriend, we walked in and literally 
this girl, this worker was like this on the counter, looking at her phone, did not give us eye contact. It's like, we shouldn't have been there at all. Like she was like, eh. oh no, <laughs> oh no. A word, is that a word? But like, uh, yeah. I would like chicken. Yes, it's a fish place, but yeah, I love their chicken. I'm like, I want the two piece chicken and hush puppies and fries. But I felt weird talking to her because she was still looking at her phone. We didn't have her matter. phone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that's one of these things. You know, I just I just finished reading the book uh I Gen by uh uh Dr. Jeannie Twangy, I think is is the, the gal's name. She's a college professor at at uh, South Dakota State University, I believe, but but uh, yeah, this book iGen is is absolutely amazing. Um, talking about the 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 different ways that this this coming generation actually interacts with people, right? I mean, I, I know your yeah. podcast is a lot about this, these interpersonal uh, interactions and and social interactions and things like that, and. And uh, yeah, this, this, this iGen, this Gen Z, depending on, you know, who you're talking to or what yeah. you're talking about, it's, uh, you know, kind of interchangeable, but, but the, the idea that so much of their interaction, that, that, that generation's interaction is now done online. I mean, you know, some of these kids, I mean, cause obviously the result of the, the, the pandemic and the government's response to the pandemic with schools shut down and things like that, you know, kind of took a lot of those kids around the country out of that, that in-person schooling environment for a couple of years. Right. And, yeah. and put that online and, and, and increased that almost dependence on the screen time and, and really kind of messed up that, that true balance of, of how we, interact with people face to face and those those social norms that those etiquette things that would be normal to to you and I or you know people in yeah. in uh, in Gen X or or even the millennials um things that were the social norms things that were social etiquette things that we just would not break right making eye contact Having a conversation with somebody, not picking up our phone and and trying to, uh, you know, trying to maintain a conversation with another human being while being completely distracted by this handheld device, you know. So, yeah. so those things are are things that is is one thing, you know. There, there's we we think about life and and how progress you know certain things are considered progress but but there are definitely things nadine that we have to look at as a society as a human race and say yeah we really followed this up we have to kind of reverse course here and get back to uh yes. certain social norms you know that that maybe don't include you know having this little super distractor in our hand all the time yeah and really have those personal interactions, making eye contact, yes. really taking in and receiving what this person is saying to me. And uh, yeah, that is definitely one. I uh, I just attended a, uh, I, I had to virtually attend, unfortunately, I couldn't make it, but uh, uh, Ian Rowe at the Vertex Academy in, in, in the Bronx, New York, had, uh, had Jonathan Haidt and a couple other people um, uh, for a panel discussion talking about digital distractions and yes. and how how important it is that we as parents I, I know um like you're you're a parent you you you've even got a grandchild on the way right if I'm if I'm not mistaken wow and, uh, kudos and, to and, you and, but, yes. but me as a me as a parent you know one of the things that I uh I look at and I think about nowadays and and but is these digital distractors, these little super yes. distractors that are, yes. that are in the hands of our, our, our children. And, and we need to realize that, yes, it's great to have information and, and have information at our fingertips when, when we want it most, but having so much information at hand at the drop of a hat, for everybody, especially these little young impressionable minds, it's probably not yeah. the best thing in the world. So, so we need to realize that 
that this is something that we need to slow our roll on as a society, keep those little super distractors away from our, our little young and impressionable minds and, and make sure that they're, while there is a time and a place for everything, that time and the place for little kids is not to be uh, messing around with, with the internet and, and things like that, because that's exactly what happens. You know, you walk into long John Silver's and, and there's a there's a gal on the phone that doesn't even recognize your presence. And and even if she did, would she make eye contact and things like I that? Know. You know? So, yeah. so it's it's we've, we've got to think about those things. What are the long term ramifications of some of these things that we have done? And and uh, yeah. that, that those things are completely lost on so many. You know, and that reminds me of like there's two things that I go back to is walmart when they used to bag and they used to be happy but then they were like getting rid of all the employees and had self-checkout and then we were bagging our stuff i remember going through the motion like what the heck and then they had people standing around watching you do your work and bagging it like i was like I could pay for this. Oh, like <laughs> I remember I had one guy be really rude to me. And I was just like, you stand there and think you can be rude to a customer. Like I didn't become a Karen or anything. And I'm sorry if your name is Karen. That's what they call him, you know. But I was just like, dude. And then my mom went and the same person was rude to her. He's no longer there, thank God. But then HEBs started opening up and I remember my first HEB experience and we were checking out me and my son and they were bagging my groceries and the lady was nice to me and I automatically was scared like <laughs> why are you being nice to me why am I not working like what is the motive be behind bagging. this <laughs> yes. And even like the manager, like saw my son in football and, you know, oh, do you play football? He was so nice to my son. And he was like, I don't want to call it a candy aisle, but you know, the pickup bins, you can put the stuff in the bag. He's like, dude, I used to play football, you know, and they got to talk and he's like, you can get a little candy. And I was like, I've never seen good customer service like this. For whatever reason, I'm trying to figure out if that scared me so much, I go back to Walmart just to bag my stuff because I always see HEB so crowded and I'm like, but I want to change there. I love the friendly atmosphere. And I'm like, maybe it's just the surrounding of too many people. Now, I do watch some reels before I go to bed because I believe laughter is the best medicine. And talking about our generation and they were talking about like I think March is mental illness you know awareness or something so but it was a guy going into a tea shop or maybe it's tea and coffee shop and I don't know if you've seen this one where he was trying to order just tea and they're like what kind of boba or whatever it's called and he's like I don't want that and he's like no it comes with it there's like no button on our thing to He's like, okay. And so we went through the process, but then she's like at the point, like, hey, you got to use the app to pay. That is the one thing I don't like. I don't know if you like but it. Don't but don't forget to add a tip, right? <laughs> yes. yeah. a tip. Uh, He's like, let's just do it old fashioned. Let's use cash. Oh, uh, you have to have a $15 minimum or, okay, well, let's do credit. You take credit cards. Yeah. But, um, I forgot what she said, you know, I, but there was a no, a big no to that too. And he was like freaking out. Like, it's not your fault. It's the system's fault basically. And I agree with that a hundred percent because it really is. I mean, the way that people are doing things, um, I was so surprised. I love doing karaoke. You were in front of the KJ. He or she is there. You should be able to go up. Hey, you know, we formed this bond with our KJs. Hey, I'm here. Give me a hug. You know the songs I like, you know, and they'll get it in because it's documented. But no, when you come and say, I have to scan an app and I have to work to find my song, 
What fun is that? I am at a place where you can have a drink and relax after a long day at work. What makes you think I want to work just the thing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the world it is a changing, right? I, I mean, it's uh, it's definitely one of these things that you know. I, I look around and I see a lot of these things that, like I said, people consider progress and and. Uh, <laughs> and, and then you start to feel like the old guy at the club, right? Where you're like, oh, come on, why do I got to do this? Or, you know, whatever. But, but uh, again, I, you know, I kind of go back to, to full circle and say, okay, well, it is, is, is this really a bad thing or is my perception that this is a bad thing? And, and there's certainly a lot of these things where, yeah, you're right. I, I don't want to, I don't want to put in the work when I go to, uh, um, I go to a, a grocery store to, you know, yeah. to, to scan all my own stuff. And then inevitably I'm going to be the one person that gets to the one thing and it's not going to scan. And then I'm trying to figure it out. And then I got to call somebody over there and, and whatever. It's like, come on, can't we just go back to the time when they were doing this stuff? <laughs> mm -hmm. But, but, you know, but then I look at things too and I'm like, okay, is this, or is this out or is this in my control or is this outside of my control? And then, all right, am I going to let this one thing today, yeah. you know, this one part of my day, this 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 fraction of my day truly affect my my whole day? And, you know, is there a positive way that I can look at what this is, right? I mean, um now in most cases now they've really improved the 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 self checkout stuff. I can get in and out of there a lot quicker. Uh, do I, I do miss the, the, um, you know, that personal interaction that, that I, I, I had with somebody, you know, where, you know, they said, Hey, how are you today? Did you find everything that you were looking for? You know, and, mm -hmm. and I'm, you know, I'm like, Hey, I'm fantastic today. Yes. I did find everything I was looking for, or no, I didn't, I was looking for this and, and it appears that you were out of it. And, you know, so, so all of these things that are happening around us, Nadine, are, are, you know, they're going to have their pros. They're going to have their cons. But if we focus on the pros and try to try to look at it, you know, just get into that paradigm shift where we say, OK, this isn't my style. I miss the way that it was when I was a kid. I got to be honest with you, as somebody who grew up in the late 70s, early 80s, you know, and then and then became an adult in the in the, in the early 90s. I look at so many things and I'm like. Gosh, I wish it was. I, I wish I could go back to that time. You know, a time before yes. cell phones, a time before there was a computer yes. in every house, a time you know when all the neighborhood kids were out riding around on their bicycles, and we could just, you know, we just did things, and 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 it wasn't everybody locked up in their room, but but those times, at least for now, are gone, and we have to yeah. look at the world as it is today. And instead of getting caught up in the past, which is very easy to do, um, yeah, we look at it and say, okay, what can I take out of this environment that I'm in today, truly live in what we're in today, and continue to make the world a better place yeah. uh, with, with what I'm given, with what I've, what I've got in my environment. And... Uh, it's it can be tough to do, but it's important, you know. It, it's very very yeah. important. So so that's why I talk about you know bettering the world one at a time, one attitude at a time, you know, being the change that we want to see in the world. I think Gandhi originally said that. I use it a lot nowadays. I don't think in mind, but you know, we we have to just realize that this is what it is, and we in our own little ecosystem can grow you know, with, with positivity and, and with the right attitude and the way that we interact with people. And I would encourage people, you know, the big thing that, that, that I want to, uh, you know, that I'm always thinking about and, and how we can make, um, make things better is really have those deep conversations like you and I are having here, right? Yeah. Where, yeah. It's a good old fashioned conversation going in all kinds of different directions. We're learning stuff about each other. We're seeing each other. We're receiving the message. Not enough people do that anymore, right? Because they get stuck in that little super, uh, that that little super distractor in their hand. And while the world around us is 
constantly changing and probably changing at a breakneck pace faster than most of us can comprehend, we still can have those true interpersonal interactions with each other. Yeah. Really get involved with those people around us and and say, you know, let's let's just lock up our phones for a little bit and let's just sit here and talk. Or, yeah. or you know, let's let's just really start here and see where this conversation goes, you know. And uh I think it's so important. I, I think it's incredibly important. But then uh then yeah, really try to receive that message from that that person that you're speaking with. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I hate to say this is like a nuisance, but like even in dating, I've had somebody I went on dates with that read the news constantly on a date. And I'm like, wow. I'm, I'm right here. I like <laughs> I'm off of work and uh, you're reading the news. Well, it's factual and I need to read it. And I'm like, Okay, so I'm sorry, like as a girl, that's a red flag. And um, <laughs> there's a even time and a I'm place for my... everything, and this isn't it. <laughs> but I'm noticing this happens more and more. My ex, he would play games all the time. And I'm just like, dude, I'm so tired of this. I want to find somebody who is not on their phone constantly. So I give kudos to my boyfriend. However, <laughs> have I seen him on the phone playing a game every now and then? Yes, I have, but I'm not going to mark it as a red flag. I'm just, I got to approach it differently. So like if we're out to eat, I, I will make a comment like I just check my phone in case my kids need me really quick or something that's, you know, I don't want to answer questions or emails from like social media right away. I don't want to do that unless it's an emergency, but like the Apple watch will prevent me. I always turn my phone over or stick it in my purse because I want to have that conversation with you. Like, Oh, what does this weekend look like? Or how is work? You know, um, my boyfriend, he, he's older than me and he has gone back to college and I'm so happy for him where I get to giggle a little bit and I love it. He told me a story, his first day in there, they thought he was the professor. And I'm just like, because he's surrounded <laughs> by 20 year old people, you know, for psychology and stuff. And I'm like, but dude, I'm jealous. I want to go back to college and learn psychology, you know? So he's my inspiration right now. But everything he learns and reads, he will tell me, regardless if I want to hear it or don't hear it, he just tells me. And I'm just like, okay, I'll soak this in. I mean, I'm the kind of person who will go to bed, put my AirPods on and listen to Audible and choose a book. Mm -hmm. I may not hear the book halfway in because I'm asleep. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it is about people talking. I don't do it on my podcast, but I can fall asleep. I can fall asleep. I love my pastor's <laughs> voice, but there's sometimes I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> so, but I mean, it's just, it's amazing. Um, really quick. Do you have a minute? I'm going to try to do this in a minute or two, but have you seen these? I These have bracelets. seen, yeah, your your bracelets, faith, hope, and then uh, yeah, some faith kind and of hope. charm bracelet there, right? What? Oh the... no, no, no. So not this one, even though it's a Pandora. But uh, so the faith and hope is snap bands. They're all over Facebook right now, and I love them. So, but they have this cool elastic on the back, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about it really quick. But this faith one is brand new to their collection, and guess what? You can't get it without a code. Oh, nice. Okay. <laughs> K-H-A. Keep hope alive. Nice. <laughs> so when I was talking with them, I go, I really want the word faith. And it got brought about and he wrote me, yeah, people can get faith if they give me the code. And okay. I was like, cool, you know? So the faith one is a new edition one, but... If you don't know much about snap bands, I'm going to kind of go over this with you. So the world is a stressful place for everyone with work, school, relationships, health issues, finances, and nightly news. There's anxiety every day. Negative thoughts can keep popping into your head over and over again. I'm not good enough. 
I'm not worthy of anybody loving me. Bad things always happen to me. So if you ever have these type of thoughts, you're not alone. More than 40 million Americans are diagnosed with an anxiety disorder. So anxieties, worries, and fears can stop you from finding inner peace and achieving your true potential. You deserve the best life. Finally, there's an amazing new bracelet called Snap Bands. And it was invented to help you reduce anxiety, control OCD, and calm stress. So snap bands are a cognitive behavioral tool based on proven brain neuroscience. And the way snap bands works is amazing. (laughs) So snap bands bracelets look like a stylish piece of jewelry on your wrist, but its unique design actually hides a secret elastic band that sits right on your inner wrist, which is a pressure point for your brain's nervous system. When you Give that elastic a little tug. You will feel a very gentle, soft vibration on your inner wrist. A gentle physical sensation is all you need to reduce the anxiety. And here's why. Did you know that the human brain can only deal with one emergency at a time? Well, whenever you feel the unwanted negative thought in your head, just gently snap that elastic on your inner wrist risk and it forces your brain to refocus. So it gives you a reset. They do have mantra words. Um, They do have seven. So if you want it faith, you can get it. That makes it eight, but you have to have that code. But the other words are believe, blessing, dream, fearless, hope, love and peace. So when you are doing this, and for me, everybody who knows me knows I'm in the hospital. Um, so mine is hope. I hope they can get my vein. That's one (laughs) when they're giving me an IV because they always miss. And I'm like, they do lessons. It's like, why do I have eight paramedics and an ultrasound machine? Like looking at this, oh my gosh, you know? So I'm always praying. And now that I have these and they do work. So it does help you rethink, refocus. And that is the key right there. So with the mantra words, you can say, I believe in myself. I am a blessing. I am fearless. I will always have hope. So with these bands, they come in all different colors. You name it, purple, blue, red, yellow, brown, white. And um, they are water resistant, which I love. So I can do the dishes and take a shower in these as well. They're made out of the vegan leather, which it doesn't cause anything wrong with the skin. It doesn't have an allergic reaction. The marks you see on my hand are from IVs. It has nothing to do with anything. But, um, <laughs> but anyways, yeah, so I love mine. I want you guys to go check them out at www snapbands.com it's uh let me spell that out for you it's s n a p p b a n d z dot com so check them out they do give a portion back to the mental illness um organizations out there too which is really really good so check them out so wilk tell me like more about your podcast I really want to know. Yeah. So the derate the hate podcast, uh, again, going back to my original mission statement, bettering the world one attitude at a time. Uh, the derate the hate podcast is for, um, it's, it's again, there's, there's so much toxicity in this, in this online ecosystem that, that so much of uh, our life is spent in nowadays. And, and, and this is basically a podcast about turning down the toxicity and, and helping, uh, helping us to see things in, in a way that maybe we didn't think of before, or you know, look at look at worlds uh, that that may be outside. Of, and when I say worlds, I mean, um, you know, diving into the 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 differences between us and 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 other people, because so much of of what uh, what the media and and say politicians and and things now. Is, it's it's really about driving this us versus them narrative and and kind of separating us into different uh, classes and identities and and whatever and this is really about bringing people together for a good conversation okay. you know uh, sometimes it's me and somebody else sometimes it's two other people 
Um, sometimes it's just me talking, but but what it is, is it's it's about showing people that there is a better way to interact with those that that maybe we don't think we have anything in common with, or uh, um, you know, maybe even somebody that we know that we vehemently disagree with, but a better way of interacting with those people because as we uh, 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 fall into these us versus them traps that uh yeah. because let's face it there's a lot of people out there that have a vested interest in keeping us all separated it, it's just it's unfortunate but it's true and and those people uh while they uh while they are, are not the best to listen to they often get the most airtime or 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 the, you know the most viral tweets or whatever you want to call it right mm-hmm. they, yeah. those that those that wish to keep us divided are often those that go viral and and, and uh, or or like uh like like somebody that uh, uh I heard say one time is those that know the least say it the loudest right um well we need to as a society we need you know as people as human beings you know as 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 all human beings need to learn that we all have a a common humanity. And if we stay in these us versus them bubbles, if we stay separated, if we do not interact with those of differing mindsets and and different ideas than ours, that that creates these ignorance, uh, these silos of ignorance. And with those silos comes uh, uh, comes fear because that, w- w- you know, those things that we don't know, like my friend Monica Guzman from Braver Angels always says, you know, those, uh, 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 those that are underrepresented in our life will be overrepresented in our mind. And often those thoughts that we have about those people that we just don't know enough about that ignorance tends to lead to a, a kind of a fear based, uh, mindset that fear creates anger. That anger will eventually lead to violence. That's why so much of the violence that we see today is because people really don't have those interactions. They really don't enter into goodwill conversations with people of differing mindsets. And then it's very yeah. easy for those those outrage entrepreneurs and those 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 fear mongers, those grievance grifters. It's very easy for them to whip us up into anger uh, based on false ideas of hate and stuff, because when we're ignorant of it, we just don't know what we don't know. So my podcast, the Derate the Hate podcast is really, again, bettering the world one attitude at a time. We did not create the hate, but together we can derate the hate. We can tone it all down. We can yes, have I those conversations. That. We can make each other or we can make the world a better place by really having conversations, getting to know each other. We don't have to agree, but if we enter into a conversation based on our common humanity and, and really look to who this other person is, what it is about their life experience that makes them believe what they believe, that ignorance goes away. That ignorance is often the root cause of a lot of the hate that we see in the world, and and that hate is what leads to the violence. If you want to make the world a better place, start having conversations with people that you don't agree with. The world will change. Our mindsets will change. Attitudes will change. The world will become so much better, and that's what we need to do. We do. And we need to all become better listeners. Even though we may not agree on a topic, let them be heard. Try to take in what they're saying and see their point of view too. You can be opinionated. You know, everybody is. So, but I think, you know, something I learned over the past five years is being a better listener. I know as a kid, I was like, I never gave people the time of the day. And I'm just, I will admit that now. (laughs) But, you know, being a better listener is just so important. But I am so well I, you're amazing. So like, where can they find you on social media? So if you just uh, look up derate the hate, uh, that's, the, you know, just it's three words, derate the hate. Um, you'll, you'll find me Wilkes world. So W just like milk, but Wilk W I L K S world Wilkes world. Uh, you can find me Wilk Wilkinson. Um, there's pages for all those different things. They'll all get to the same spot. And, uh, 
yeah, that derate the hate message is is incredibly important. Another organization I do an incredible amount of work with, Nadine, is called Braver Angels. Braver Angels is the largest grassroots organization working towards a movement of depolarization, trying to mend the fabric of our nation. And uh, I do an incredible amount of work with them as well. So Braver Angels, uh, you can find out more about me there. But more, I more would importantly, love to talk to them too. Dang, yeah, that's that, awesome. That is a yeah. that is an organization that everybody everybody uh, uh, across our nation needs to look at because polarization, as my friend John Wood Jr. likes to say, polarization is the one problem that ensures all other problems will not be solved. Get involved in Braver Angels, and yeah. uh, um, there, there's there's really very little in in this in this world especially in this crazy uh political season that we're going to be in nowadays yeah uh there's nothing more important than trying to get involved with an organization yes. a civic um, organization that is about bringing people together about actually mending the fabric of our nation unity and civility over toxicity will win the day and we've got to we've got to really focus on that so Find me at deratethehate.com and uh, check out braverangels.org. And uh, yeah, let's make the world a better place. Awesome. I love it. I love it. Yeah. It was so nice talking to you today. And also really quick, I wanted to thank our other sponsors also who make Keep Hope afloat. I love saying that. So we mentioned lifeonrecord.com was your interactive guest book for any events. And then snap bands, your bracelet that reduces anxiety, OCT, and I'm going to throw PTSD in there because it does. So they were at www.snapbands.com. We also have Ogden Ventures, LLC. Marcus Ogden, he's a former NFL player, keynote speaker, best-selling author, and podcast host. You can find him at www. Let me spell this out. Marcus is M A R. Q-U-E-S, Ogden, O-G-D-E-N dot com. Our next one is BridalShowsInc.com. If you are planning a big event in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, which is Texas, um, they host about five to six different trade shows where you can go and meet different vendors. They showcase their work, talk to them, maybe schedule an appointment, get some pricing, or just book them for your event. <laughs> They're wonderful shows. Our next one is MilesAndSmilesEvents.com. Miss Deborah Rose, her background is an investigation, but she also for events, does handwriting analysis and lipstick readings, and she is accurate. I've seen her at her events, and she is amazing. So check her out. Next, I have Bryce Harney at www.brycemagic.com. You've probably seen him on TV. He's, of course, a magician, a mind mentalist. He does big corporate events and church events. I know that. But I tell people, hey, just go on to YouTube, type in Bryce Harney. You can see some of his tricks and everything. He's a great guy. Next, we have richmondpunch.net. He graduated from the Julie Arts. He's been a violinist for over 30 years. He's played in front of a million people, had two spots on Lifetime shows to play the violin. He's amazing. So check him out. Our last one is TK Hair Salon. They are located in Plano, Texas. So if you are in the area, check them out at www.tkhairsalon.com. And, you know, if you're a man, woman, child they do your hair hair color perms updos facial i love them they get my gray hair out i love them, so check them out. <laughs> <laughs> if you have any questions for wilk today please call us at 833-780-HOPE which is 4673 i promise i will send them right over to wilk and he will get those answers I'll make sure of it. So, you can find us at www.keephopealivepodcast.com or wherever you find your podcast. But once again, Wilk, thank you so much for coming on to Keep Hope Alive. I really had fun getting to know you and talking to you. So, thank you so much, Nadine. It's been a pleasure and uh, I appreciate it a lot. Thank you. Well, thank you. Until our next show, guys, ah, love and light. You see, I have a light behind me. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs>